have been trying to make a video about farting all day long. But because I'm at my boyfriend's house and it seems like they have a non-stop landscaper that is always, always cutting the grass and blowing grass non-stop. And this lovely, lovely neighborhood always has children always playing around and screaming. So it is becoming very difficult for me to create a video to teach you guys how to park. But that's not going to stop us today because I'm going to teach somebody how to part some hair. We're going to get right into it. So if you do hear the lawnmower or if you do hear the children, please disregard and try to follow my command. Okay? Do you want to learn how to braid? If so, keep watching. Me. So this is Maya and Maya is already has I already created her. I already have her some pre-parted hair. Um to give us a baseline on braids. I also created, created a braid sizing chart for those that are really trying to figure this out. They know how to braid. They know how to do box braids. They might know how to do soft locks or this or that, but they're still struggling with some of the techniques behind parting. And that's what we're gonna learn today is a little, we're gonna demystify parting. So there's several different ways that people do like to part. And I'll show you Amaya right now. I know we have her in the light, but I'll show you Amaya right now. The most important thing when it comes to parting is focusing on the ear and the nape and knowing where her middle part is. The ear plays a very important part when it comes to um, parting. I have Maya set for some individuals, okay? That could be individual box braids, that could be individual knotless, that can be individual soft locks, butterfly locks, or any type of loose style. I have Maya pre-parted for that. I don't personally pre-part hair, but I, for the sake of you understanding how to do it, I went ahead and pre-parted her hair. So let's go ahead and get into the chart that I created for you to understand how we're gonna do this. This is the chart that I've created for you. This is a very important chart and it is not law. It is not the braid Bible, but this is a good place to start. Okay, so if you look in every one of these boxes, and hopefully you can see it, every box of all their corners of every one of these boxes for the small, medium, large, and jumbos has a number. And on this uh, particular, um, you know what, let me do this somewhere else. So I went ahead and pinned this on the refrigerator because I want you to really get an idea of this chart. This is a small, you see the number 10 right there, okay? The reason why you got the number 10 because you need to know that every size braids, let's say box braids or knotless braids, every size braids that you use or that you're going to do or install into someone's hair, you need to know what your rows are. I say that my smalls are 10 rows on, on a person's head. I say that my mediums are eight rows on a person's head. And then of course, six for large, four for jumbo. Now you get to choose your own sizing chart, whatever it works for you. Every braider is different. On this particular, this is supposed to be someone's back of their head, okay? I am not an artist, so I am doing the best that I can do. That's their neck, and that's the starting of their braid line, okay? So you see that I do, um, I like to braid my hair in um, brick lay. Every braid should be able to fall, and every gap should be able to fall in between the other, okay? So that way it'll look more full, all right? From the ear down, you've got four rows. That's for me. And then from the ear up is six, is six rows. Okay, which will make 10, right? From the ear down for my mediums, I have three rows. From the ear up is five. I'm gonna explain that more on Maya. On my large, from the ear down, I have two rows. From the ear up, I have four rows. That's my large. Someone else might put three rows from the ear up. I will explain that again. And again, with jumbos from the ear down, I just got one row because I want these giant, two giant braids in the back. And then um, 
uh, three rows from the ear up. It's, some people might do two rows for their jumbo. So I just wanted to show y'all this braiding chart. Again, for my smalls, I like 10 rows on a person's head, eight rows for medium, six rows for large, and then four rows for jumbo. Let's get back over here. So you guys just saw that chart that I just put on the refrigerator for you guys to be able to kind of see a better view of that chart. Whenever I am doing some individual braids, whether it be knotless box braids or any type of boxed individual style, I always like to use the brick lay pattern. And the reason why I like the brick lay pattern is because I would prefer it not, I prefer as less gaps as possible. Again, with parting, um, you should know that your row size, so the width of your row, the amount of rows, depending on the size that you're doing, the amount of rows that you're gonna put in a person's head, and the size of the box, all of this matters, is going to come out and it's gonna play a part in how long it's gonna take you, and it's gonna play a part and how it's going to look at the end, okay? And the one thing I know that when you're a beginner braider, and as me, when I first started off, I'm trying to figure out how can I finish as fast as possible. You, you would more, you're, it's better off you trying to take your time and get it right. And if that puts a little extra time on the service, at least you know your client is gonna be happy with what you have given them. So you don't want to rush a process that you're still trying to figure out. But you have got to get these parts right. If you don't get the part right, then then just throw the whole braid away. If you can't part, then don't even try to braid. You know, you may understand the concept of braiding. You may be able to attach um, extension hair into a braid. But if you can't part, throw the whole braid away. So it is very important for you to take attention to the braids. I braid this way. This is the way I braid. I part, I part, I part, and then I go all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, all the way, like that. Some people take their hair and they'll take their client and then they will part halfway. It's a half braid, uh, half uh, part like this. And then they'll braid all of this and then they'll come in and start braiding the rest. Um, that does interfere with your brick lay. If you want a seamless look, then that you're not gonna get that seamless look unless you really know how to make those rows line up. Now, I parted Maya's hair for mediums, but because Maya is a mannequin, and Maya is a mannequin. So, and because she is a mannequin, because Maya, Maya is a mannequin, her head is smaller than the average head. So it's gonna give the appearance that these rows that I've created for her, is gonna give the appearance that um, it's smaller. But we're just gonna pretend like Maya's head is not as small as it really is. Um, while I'm talking about head size, you need to know that size matters. Size matters with your parts. I'm not knowing how I'm gonna make this a short video because I, I've gotta go through all of this stuff. And I might sound like I'm all over the place, but size of the person's head that you're doing does matter. All right, and again, row size matters. The amount of rows that you're gonna do matter in the box, size matters. But not just the box size that matters. The size of the person's head matters, okay? So we're gonna talk about that real quick. As in my diagram, you saw that um, I did the, I did it like this. And I'll just bring this one up. This was a prototype. And let's see, you probably can't see it from back here, but you see how I kind of did it like that. Everybody's head neck or nape of their neck doesn't do like that, okay? The average person's nape of their neck is this way, okay? Some people's is like that, and some people's is like that. When you have a nape of the neck that is like this, you're going to, that is a bigger head. As someone that has a big head, and that's not, there's no offense in that. Everybody got to have a head. 
we can't, we can't, you know, what God gave us, we got to work with. So just because a person got a big head doesn't affect their looks, doesn't affect anything. They just have a big head. They might have a little face, okay? But they might have a big head and that's okay. But you as a braider, you need to know whenever you have a little head and when you have a big head, sit in your chair because you're going to need to know how long is this going to take me to do? Say you do have someone that has a bigger head that sits in your chair you are probably gonna have to make some adjustments. For your normal mediums, the very first row, you might put four braids for the average person on that first row, okay? But for someone whose nape of their necks extends out into a square or rectangle, then you might end up finding yourself having to put five or even six and you have got to know, depending on how many braids that you start with on the nape of the neck, that first row matters. So how many braids you put on the nape of that neck is going to determine how many braids is up here, how many braids is up here, how many braids is up here, okay? So for a bigger head person, you are gonna have to consider that you're probably gonna be braiding 30 minutes to an hour longer than the average person's head, okay? I'm even considering adding as an add-on, do you want an extra row? Because one thing I'm not gonna do, I'm not going to change my row amount unless that's something that, it really should be something that I add as an, as an add-on because it's not fair to my bigger head clients because my smalls are 10 rows. They might need 11 or 12 rows to really get that small look. They might end up with a medium look because they have a bigger head and I'm unwilling to, to add an extra row um, because that's my chart size. If I have 10 rows, I might go down and give you nine rows as a small, okay? Or eight, I might give you seven rows as a medium. Okay, or six, I might give you, you see what you see where I'm going here? Five rows for, depending on how big or small your head is, I may adjust that size, but I'm not gonna go up. Because if I go up on a person and I give them 11 rows or 12 rows, we're getting into extra small. And I really don't like doing extra smalls or any type of micro type of work. That's me. If you don't mind, then that's on you. So, again, you are going to have to know that this is just the average size. Let's just stop talking about big heads for a second. Let's stop talking about big heads for a second. The average person, for my mediums, I average, depending on if their head is average size or some heads are smaller. So for my medium, sometimes I end up with four rows at the very first row, excuse me, four boxes, and sometimes I end up with three boxes. It really depends on the size of the nape of that neck or the size of that person's head. Okay. But if you do do four rows, then up this, the next row up is going to be five rows. And the next row up right at that ear is going to be six rows. Okay. And you just have to understand the importance is whatever you're doing from that person's ear down matters okay so whatever's happening from the ear down i think i said below the ear on the chart my mistake it's actually right here right here that ear right there whatever's because all this is for up here so whatever back here i take from the top of that ear right and cutting it it matters what you're doing Okay, because it's going to determine the size of your braid. If you're brick laying it, then it's going to give you pretty much the same exact size braids all the way through. Okay? So, again, if I start with four, then that's going to be five, and that's going to be six. If I start with three, then that's going to be four, and that's going to be five. It doesn't matter. Whatever you can fit right here, and it still be a medium. From the ear down, it matters. So if this was a small, so I parted her hair from mediums, okay? So I've got her three rows from the ear down, okay? And then from the ear up, I've got one, two, three, four, five. And I count that from the middle part down. So from the from the ear to the middle part, how many braids do you have, okay? So I have one, 
two, three, four, five. All right, so that's five plus three, that's eight rows. Remember on my chart, I have eight rows for mediums, okay? I don't, I don't say that that's, I don't say that that's 10, okay? Because again, I do my rows like this, okay? Oops, can't see that. It wraps all the way around, so that's one row. That's two rows. That's, you see what I'm saying? One, two, three, four, five, okay? That's how I do it. And that should give them with mediums from their middle part, from the middle part, you should have 10 braids all together. So I always tell people what you do, what's, what's on the left is on the right, all right? Never ever, and I don't care how you want to braid it. You can part it out, you can do it. Never ever put a braid in the middle part. You are not giving professional braids if you put a braid in the middle part. Some people have asked me, oh, um, uh, do you braid, do you braid from the mid, with the middle part? Every braider should braid with the middle part. I don't care what style you're doing, unless it's free parts, unless it's free parts. Every braider should always have a middle part because guess what? If you want to wear a side part, you want to wear it this way, you want to wear a deep part, it shouldn't matter which way, but it should always be able to revert equally back to the middle. And I, that is just law when it comes to parting. It's law. You know, that is the law. If you, if you have got to have your middle part. If it's not a middle part, then something is not even. All right, braids and parting is all about numbers. Matter of fact, again, if you don't know how to part, throw the whole braid away. You are not braiding if you're not parting, okay? It's all about numbers and shapes and sizes. Size matters. We're gonna get into one other thing when it comes to the size of the head that I think you all should know. Um, again, we talked about the big head. You know big head is by the by the shape of their neck. As a braider, you just always want to know what, what, what your day is going to look like. A person sits in your chair. First thing you want to look at is the nape of their neck. What does the nape of their neck, what does the nape of their neck look like? And again, this is an easy day. This is an okay day. This might be a little harder only because it's gonna be a lot longer and it's gonna try you because it's gonna give you more time, more braids, more boxes, okay? You need to know that. Another size of uh, shape of head that you wanna be on the lookout for that might cost you more time, which is fine, but you need to know this as a braider. An oblong, O-B-L-O-N-G head will cost you more time. That's fine, again. These are beautiful, beautiful women. Big head, long head, round head, heart-shaped head. They're coming in there and they are um, patroning you and you want to bring them the best service. So knowing their head shape and knowing what you can bring to the table for them is very important. So you know how I'll say the ear is very important. For a person that has an oblong head, from the nape of their neck, up to the top of their head right here. Sometimes it's higher. So that means that there's a lot of work from that ear down. Cause it's long. They have a longer head, okay? And it's a lot more work. It's probably more work than the just big head. An oblong head, you have a lot of braids back here. And then you have still the average amount of braids at the top. That's the average amount of braids you still have for oblong head, but they have probably an extra row that whether you like it or not, you're going to have to throw in there. Otherwise, you're going to be giving them large braids and that's not what they book for unless they book for it. But even with the larger braids, you're still going to have to put in that work. So, um, I just wanted to throw that in when it comes to head shapes. All right, so again, we are talking about parting. If you really want to get into the basics of parting, you might want to know how to do uh, um, 
you should know how to do a basic cornrow set. One of the hardest things to do as far as like cornrow braiding is the actual cornrow. Why? Because that is going to really try you when it comes to the parting. And it's not easy. Well, it's easy to me now. But to just do a nice, perfectly cornrow where you're parting that hair from top to bottom. And if you can do that, you are well on your way to being a great part or a braider that knows how to part very well. Again, sometimes your work can be set apart on how clean your parts are. So really work on those parts. If you're really trying to get into professional braiding, really work on those parts. I'm telling you that that could, that could be the, the defining fact that, that the difference between you getting booked and you not being booked at all. Okay, so you really wanna work on those parts and we can get into products and of course we can get into combs. We can get into tools and utensils that you wanna to wanna to use, but um, practice that parting. So let's just take a look at Maya one more time and I'll give you a closer look up here. Again, I parted her hair for medium. I don't personally pre-part hair, but this is the um, layout. This is what my brain is doing as I'm parting through a person's hair. Sometimes with smalls, I just go ahead and just cut it right there. And then I know I need four rows in here. I gotta fit those four rows in, in here. And then once you start getting that rows, those rows down packed, then you can start really focusing on the cleanness of the actual parts, the cleanness of that part as you're going through and boxing it. And again, really try your best to uh, brick lay those boxes. Practice on the brick lay, practice on those rows. Now, if you do decide to do it in this way, you want to focus on, there's some things that you do want to know ahead of time. You want to know that these these braids right here, these braids, uh, these three braids right here, all the way around, are the longest braids it's going to take for you to do. So when you're doing that row, that's going to take a heck of a long time. This row, a long time. That row, a pretty long time. And then once you get to these rows right here, these two, one, Two. Once you get to those rows, you know you've made it to the home stretch. So uh, that's something you should know. Another thing that I noticed that clients really care about, no matter what you've done from these rows down, okay, no matter what you have done, outside of you not tugging on their edges too much, because we can get on that topic of conversation when it comes to braids. We'll talk about that in another video. But something that clients really care about. This is our last row. Now to them, th your client, they see this as two rows. I see this as one row, remember? Anyway, so this is my middle part. And so I'm going to either give her six or eight, whatever I can fit. If eight looks ridiculously smaller than the rest of the boxes, then I'm going to give her six, okay? But you don't wanna mess up right here. So when you're boxing these out, you say one, two, and then three. One, two, three. You want these braids to line up perfectly with each other. But they really care about what this looks like right here. They care about how flat that braid is, those braids are, they care about how many they are. If you just give them two, they're not gonna like it. Four, not for large, but for mediums. You give them three or four, they'll be happy. That will give them eight right here because it gives them the feeling as though they're not giant braids on their head. Um, I think that I've covered all that I'm gonna cover when it comes to parting. All I'm gonna say is stop playing these games Try your best to get good with parting. If you're not going to take any interest in parting, throw the whole freaking braid away. There's no reason to even learn how to braid if you're not going to try to perfect your parts because it's such an a, a imperative part to braiding. The parts are so very important. All right. Thank you, Maya, girl, for uh, joining me one more time to help these people learn how to braid. 
And of course, no fluff. I'm going to go ahead and get this video posted. And hopefully someone that really wants to learn how to braid and wants to make a business out of it and wants to make some money off of braiding can learn something from today. All right. So hopefully um, you guys watch the whole video. Um, and whenever you're done watching this video, your job is to get a mannequin if you don't have one or get a family or friend and get to practicing. If you're not practicing, then you're not gonna be able to braid. If you can't plait, you can't braid. If you can't cornrow, then you can't braid. If you cannot part, then you will not be braiding, okay? You can be braiding, it's just not gonna be really, it's not gonna be nice. All right, so see y'all later, okay? Thank you for showing up on this channel one more time. All right, see y'all, bye.